No Jumper, coolest podcast in the world. And before we get involved with this China podcast, I just want to send a quick, quick shout out to our web store, nojumper.com slash store. You can pick up all the kendamas that you need there. They cost between uh, about $16 and $35. And as well as that, you can get No Jumper merchandise. You could get a shirt that says Rope Gang. That's got me and Getter and Nick Coletti, except that our heads are on sperms. You get all kinds of good stuff. So head on over to nojumper.com and please, 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 Use our code, Tony the Cat, for 10% off. This episode only, 10% off. We've never done this before. I've actually haven't even thought about doing this before. 10% off the code, Tony the Cat. Let's do it. No jumper. Coolest podcast in the world. Slightly awkward pause right there. I don't know why I did that. China, how you doing? I'm feeling good. How are you? You feeling good? I just saw you face a blunt. Yeah. I didn't partake. I was like, I want to be on point. I was about to offer it to you, but yeah, I didn't know like, how you like work. But then you were like, he's white. <laughs> you know it's not happening okay so hey it's awesome to have you on the podcast we've been talking about this for a while yeah yeah for like almost like a year right yeah i got introduced to you a while ago i'm a fan of the music for sure you're an east thank coast you. warrior thank you if yes. you will mm-hmm. philadelphia yes so do you identify as like a real deal philly chick or do you feel like you're kind of an overall east coast girl or are you a new yorker at this point too no, I'm definitely a, a Philly chick, okay. for sure, forever. Where, yeah. what area of the city did you grow up in? West Philly. Really? Yeah. What is it like out there? I don't really know the sides or anything. The hood, like everywhere else. And then I like moved uptown, but like every part of Philly is just the hood, regardless. Really? Yeah. And so you lived there your whole life until when? Um, I moved away right after high school. So like, what is that? Twenty like twelve. 2012, you were out of there? Mm-hmm. Okay. That means you're almost exactly, well, probably almost exactly 10 years younger than me. Yeah. So that's good to know. Yeah. I graduated in 2012. Uh, two. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Damn. I know, right? I'm fucking ancient. That's, what was that like? like? Graduating in 2002, it was like you leave the, uh, the assembly and you just put on some Blink-182 and you just <laughs> listen to it as you drive away and you drive off into the sunset and that's it. Damn. <laughs> Okay, that, that's, like, <laughs> that, that's my question for you. What were you listening to the summer after you graduated high school? Mm, let me think. Uh, I felt like that's when acid rap came out, right? Oh, okay. From what I remember, I felt like that was like an like acid rap moment for me. Right. Um, my first time getting introduced to him. And then, uh, I can't, damn. I don't know what was coming out. <laughs> uh, I can't find. I, I'm you. I'm still stuck in like 2007. So I was probably still listening to that shit. You're still stuck in 2007. For yeah. me, 2007 was like Dipset, End of G Unit, uh, that kind of stuff. Like I know all that was happening, and I was down with it. But I was definitely like emo. You were 2007. emo. So you weren't on hip hop at that time. Not as heavily as I was discovering like rock more really more less, yeah. what were you listening to at that time even though i know i'm probably not going to have heard of most of these bands i mean there was like the general like that's when like pop rock really became a wave so right. there was like a whole lot of, like painting at the disco paramore right. fallout boy that was my first time hearing about a lot of those at the same time i was going kind of deeper so i was on some like it was bands like alisana and like uh freaking mashuga Really? And like I was go- trying to was super deep into like death metal, trying to figure it out. Really like, didn't yeah. see that coming. I didn't like, know. As I lay you were dying, like okay, yeah, shit like that. There's a whole section of dudes who are watching this right now that just became like, oh, all right, I fuck with her. <laughs> yep. <laughs> For some reason, I I feel like No Jumper is maybe like the main place where like the connection between like rap and metal gets explored because I never yeah. hear anyone else talk about it. But then constantly, I have rappers on here who are like genuine metal fans or at least had like a serious metal stage. Definitely. You just have to like keep it low key because you can like play that <laughs> shit on the aux because you're not sure who else ever heard of it. You don't think? No, nah, not at the time. I mean, that was middle school for me, so I was going to a pretty um diverse middle school. Like it was a like a real, like one of those smart schools type shit. So I was exposed to a lot of different music and mm-hmm. I was exploring a lot more like rock and um like metal and everything. But I also was like learning about like K pop and J pop and what all Jeez. that type of shit. So um I'm still definitely... baffled by K pop all the time. I still don't understand it. Like it sounds like uh, like video game music to me. Yeah, I just keep getting put on to more and more Asian hip hop, and I just keep I keep watching <laughs> yeah. it, and I keep being like, all right, but I don't really feel like I understand it. But I guess really, why would I? 
Yeah. So were you not a rap fan, like, early in your life, or? No, I was. I mean, like, some. Of, I mean, the first music I was exposed to with my parents was, like, old school hip-hop. My mm. dad never probably passed 2002 with his music collection, so I had always heard it, but just around that time, I just wanted to hear something else because um, that was, like, all I was hearing. That was, what, yeah. Did you feel like what, what what hip hop was what in your family or in your neighborhood or what? Yeah, and like a lot of it, like my parents weren't strict with it, but everyone else in my family was like they didn't want me to listen to it because at the time I feel like it was like the the sexuality was super in your face. I mean, it is now too, but like two thousand two, two thousand three, of those kind of years, like um, Lil John. Yeah, all that shit. I mean, I was still listening to it, but I just wanted to hear other shit. Yeah. Also. It's totally understandable. Do you have like yeah. a relationship to like Philadelphia rap in any way or is oh, that yeah, of you don't, course. Okay, you do. I spent like millions of hours online listening to battle raps and Oh, okay. Like, all that good I thought you were gonna say you spent millions of hours looking at Freeway's beard. <laughs> <laughs> I mean he blends in. He doesn't he looks like every other nigga like Okay, that is true. Yeah. And like, Philly. Some like Mad Ox came in and did this <laughs> podcast and he had a guy with him and like he just had like a big ass beard, and I was just like, "Oh, like I felt like I knew so much about him." I'm like, "Oh, you're from you're a Muslim guy from Philly, cool." Like, <laughs> like I just knew that right away because it's such a look, you know, out there. Mm -hmm. You never been into guys that look like that. I mean, like I'm, I have a soft spot, but like that also looks like my pop. Like, oh, okay. <laughs> like, Your dad looks like Jack Frost. <laughs> for fake. Do you know who that is? Yes, I okay, do. Good. Yes. I've been I shouting at Jack it. Frost out on this podcast, and I don't know why. I, like, talked to him on MySpace in like 2005. That's your shit. Oh. Yeah. Beards in the building. It's my space. Wait, so your parents are, are real cool hip hop fans, but like, do you think they started to feel some type of way when you started like going in the mosh pit? Nah, nah. Did you go in the mosh pit? Nah, I wasn't about <laughs> that life. I, I enjoyed watching it. I was, I was too frail for that shit. Did you go to metal shows as a kid? I went. I don't know why I'm going so I went like once there. or twice, like. I went once or twice, but I was too, like, ironic for those um, okay. concerts. I was like, I don't feel like being the only black person here. <laughs> Did you feel like they were treating you like a novelty? It, was, it wasn't even so much that. It was just, like, the good double take, like, and I was just, I was very aware of myself. Right. But it wasn't, it wasn't too bad. Everybody was, was super turned up. I probably would have gone to more rap shows as a kid if I, well, actually, you know what? Those probably were all white kids, too. I don't really even know. See, that's the problem. It's all white people going to shows, isn't it? I mean, who was having a rap show when you were, when you in were a Boston, kid? In, in, in New Hampshire? In New Nobody. Hampshire. Nobody was coming to New Hampshire. <laughs> no, I guarantee that, that like, in like 2002, like Ludacris was playing at the Worcester Palladium, <laughs> but it's like, did I care about going to that? No. Like, if that's why I feel good for kids now. It's like they have like cool, like cool underground rap scenes pretty much everywhere because of the internet. Yeah, yeah. The internet's definitely giving everybody a platform. It's like... Was there a certain point where you started to be like, okay, I'm interested in hip hop more so? Or when, when did you start rapping or making music at all? Um, well, I had always been writing. Like I tried to write books and, and novels and stuff like that all throughout middle school. Really? And high school, yeah. I would just like type them up on my computer because it didn't actually have internet. So I was either like typing stories or like playing Spider Solitaire. Oh, so, there you go. It was that, but then it didn't develop into actual songs and trying to complete songs because I couldn't complete books um, until sometime in high school. And I would like play around in school and like do little raps or whatever, but it was just like some, some regular shit. So right out of high school, I recorded my first song. Mm -hmm. And um, and where did you record it and what and what was it about? Um, I recorded it in the basement of my homie's crib who I had been spending like every day after school in high school at this crib. and. You know, my friends were recording shit, and I never did. So I finally did record something. It was um, this place in West Philly. We called it The Port. First place I got high, first place I got drunk, like all these things. So um, it was a song that ended up, I ended up putting it out called Selfie. So that was like oh, okay, the first yeah, song yeah. I had ever recorded, and then I like, really? put the shit out, yeah. And did it start doing well that made you want to go do a video for it and everything? Yeah, because I just didn't, I didn't know what to expect, really. I was just kind of like throwing it out there and everything, and the the response was good enough for me to want to put a video out, and it, that yeah. was that. But was, was that the start of everything? Like, that was when people actually started to, like, talk to you and, like, treat you, like, as a serious musician? Yeah, because okay. any other time I had been approached, it was uh, something about modeling. Like, right. 
it. Is that like the problem with being a girl in rap? Is that like every other like girl is like well not every other girl, but there's a lot of the roles in hip hop are being played by women, and they're not necessarily the boss roles. They're like there's so many video girls around mm -hmm. that is it hard to even like get people to treat you serious as a girl who's actually trying to rap. Yeah, I feel like there's there's a lot of negative connotations on being a rapper alone, and then like let alone a female rapper mm -hmm. because it. I mean, it's they're not necessarily all um, like undeserved. You know, a lot of people do have ghostwriters and shit like that. So when you get asked like, you know, do you write your raps off rip? I I get insulted mm -hmm. because I write them, but I imagine like there's been so many experiences where that has been the case. But nobody would ever ask a dude that. Like nobody. Exactly, would ever, they're never gonna yeah. ask you to your face like, yo, do you write your raps like? Yeah, and if you right. found out a dude didn't write his raps, you'd be, well, not horrified, but you'd be, like, shocked. Like, you'd think that was very, that's quite out of the ordinary, whereas, like, I, but I'm not sure what percentage, like, I definitely know girls who don't write their own raps, even, mm -hmm. like, underground rappers, like, a couple of them, but I'm not sure how common that is or if that's common throughout the history of rap. I don't know. I'm starting, to, I mean, I'm just starting to realize, like, a lot of people aren't writing their raps, period, mm -hmm. like, g no gender even necessary, and it's it's shocking to me, and it's making me, like, you know, like look at my idols differently, but... You're talking about Drake? <laughs> you talking about Nicki? No, neither <laughs> was an idol, actually. They're cool, though. Okay. Um, but just, you know, in general, like, it's, as someone who does write all my mm -hmm. own music, it was kind of shocking, because I didn't know um, See, so many people didn't. You know, you always hear that about the industry, but I feel like I don't really know that many rappers who have, who I know that they don't write their stuff, because I feel like I only hang out with, like, relatively underground people for the most part. Mm -hmm. who are at that stage where they still are writing their own stuff, I guess. I don't know. Damn, we got to swap a list later. You can tell me who ain't writing their own shit. <laughs> you got a list in your phone? No, I just, you know. <laughs> That's the ultimate, like, industry <laughs> gossip is who doesn't write their own raps and who's gay. <laughs> That's Those are the lists in my phone. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> um, wait, so you do the selfie song. Yeah. Did Yams acknowledge you because of that song? When did this happen? No, nah, um... Me and Yam started speaking because, well, I feel like the first conversation we had was about a Kooji sweater that I had. Wow. And then after that, <laughs> um, I had wanted to do a &R before I was making music. Mm -hmm. That's where I really wanted to go with it. I felt like I had an ear, and like the people that I had called, like, called it on in like, you know, like 2012 are successful now. And I was like, oh, you know, I think I can do this. And when I found out, you know, that's what he did, I asked him, I was like, you ever had like, basically an intern before, like somebody follow you around. And he told me, you know, the next time I was in New York to come fuck with him or like at the next show in Philly, something like that. So from there we just developed a friendship. Mm -hmm. But when I did start making the music, he acknowledged that, you know, I should continue making music and, mm -hmm. you know, A&R you can always do. Yeah, it's weird because I think a lot of people want to be a &Rs, but it's almost mm -hmm. impossible to get that kind of job unless you have a track record, and it's exactly. almost impossible to get a track record unless you do something that's, like, completely impossible, like, break an artist like Rocky from the ground up, which he did. Like, that's, like, that doesn't happen very often. Mm -hmm. But that's, I mean, hey, that's a, that's a good way to cheat your way into the A&R game real quick. Not cheat, but... So, was that early, though? Was that, like, Rocky's already been out and everything, and so you already, like, know about games when he got in touch with you um this is like probably uh the first time i had gone to a asap show was i was a, a senior in high school so this is 2012 i feel like that was probably his first tour after the first tape right and um that's where i i found out that it was more than just one person uh, and was a collective right and um from there that's where because you didn't have internet <laughs> I did have internet, just not on the computer in my room. Okay. Oh, okay, okay. You feel me? So, like, I I just, but I was late. Like, I had heard the tape, but, like, you know, like, out and about. That's back when you could still just hear shit. Like, mm. you just go to your homie's crib and he's playing some shit you haven't heard before, mm. which doesn't happen too often to me anymore. So, yeah. it's just like, I was like, oh, you know, what is this? And he was like, you know, can you guess where this nigga's from? I'm like, fuck no. And I heard the tape for the first time, Chopped and Screwed. Mm. Like, the oh, Slim wow, K version. Crazy, yeah. I didn't even hear the original version of the tape. Yeah. First. And God, it's so weird when you start hanging out with people who are just chopping screw shit all the time and you'd be listening to it like that. God, I got one homie who does that and this shit fucks me up. He had me listening to the same Weezer song, Chopping Screwed, for like a, a whole week, you know? It's amazing. Like, you like so that? Cool. Yeah, I, I fuck with Chopping Screwed. Yeah. Definitely. I don't know. I feel like I'm trying to like take in albums and actually know what they sound like and like form an opinion of them generally. So it's like mm -hmm. if I'm listening to it super slowed down, I feel like somebody's fucking with whatever <laughs> process I have for like trying to understand music. I don't know. That was deep. 
Yeah. That Maybe. was white of you. I, was that white? Yeah. Oh, okay, cool. I'm glad, <laughs> I'm glad we're on that same page. <laughs> Look at my giant white cat walking up, too. This could get a lot more white. Um, that cat is cute as fuck. Whose cat is that? Is that's yours? my cat. Yeah, I had him. He's from Bushwick. <laughs> oh, shit. I swear to God. <laughs> I got him like 11, 12 years ago. Oh, that's if cool. If we're really, really lucky, he might jump up here. He does that once in a while. And actually, the other day, I was like oh, filming wow. an ad, and he jumped up and puked all over the table. Oh, yeah, he's disgusting. Yeah, never mind. <laughs> well, I hope he doesn't do that to you. Wait, so you said people would always approach you about the modeling thing. Were you trying to like do the modeling thing early on? Because it seems like probably you would have people asking about it even if you didn't try. I mean, no, I mean, I was modeling first. I was modeling. I got. I was signed to Ford at fourteen. Really? Yeah, from fourteen to like sixteen. Um, Man, that seems so fucked up that a girl can be a model at fourteen. It is fucked up. I don't think. It should happen. Like, oh, she could be on a billboard, but you are it's illegal to have sex with her for four or five years. And they put me in, like, the <laughs> women's that division. Weird? That shit is crazy. Did they really? Yeah. Because like, I was, like, so tall. Strange. And it was it just wasn't a, a good look just on the shrimp that I was still in high school. I'm going to school in Philly, but I have to go to New York all the time. And, like, um, I also had braces. Like, oh. it just wasn't, I wasn't ready yet. I feel like you shouldn't start to like seven. I mean, like, I feel like that story sounds like kind of motivational in a way. Like, whoa, you were an incredibly successful model at a young age. Did that? I, did it feel that way at the time? No. Okay. Because I was still going to school every day. I, I wasn't incredibly successful. I mean, at the time, it just felt like something I was doing. It didn't feel like glamorous and shit because it was never a passion of mine or a dream of mine. A lot of people had told it. me I should do it, but I was never really interested in doing shit like that. How tall are you? Five nine and a half. Oh, okay. I thought you were like. Taller. Do you have heels on? No, I have on flip flops. Maybe I just feel short today. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's because you're standing next to Lena and she's tiny. Maybe. <laughs> um, wait, so was there a moment where you just like stopped doing the modeling thing where you're like, I'm over this? Yeah, what? I was about to go to the military and all types of other shit. Military? Yeah. You're listening to Meshuga. <laughs> you're going to join the military? I'm like, and you had a, an active modeling career at 14? Like, there's a lot of strange stuff going on here. I'm gonna be totally honest with you. Yeah, <laughs> right. like yeah, I was out of high school. I wanted to go to the military because I wanted them to pay for college and pay for LASIK so I could be a pilot. Oh, I got that. That shit's amazing. LASIK. Oh, Best did you? Best twenty five hundred bucks ever. Oh, I got it like eight years God. ago. I haven't thought about it since. Oh shit! Oh my See, God. everyone I know who got it is so worth it, right? It is. Yes. It's I'm the just, best just thing drop I ever the did. bag for the fucking. Oh, it's nothing. Because think about it, 2500 bucks. I guarantee I would have spent that on glasses, contacts, contact solution over the course of like seven, eight years, you know? Damn. And you just have 2020 now. That's perfect, yeah. yeah. Does it hurt? Uh, it's, it's actually super fucking weird. They like strap your eye open and then they take this laser and they just like shear off a little tiny part of your eye. And you know, like if you were to burn your hair, it has that very distinct smell. Well, it smells like that because it's still like burning skin. And so it's really creepy to think that your eye is making a smell that smells like burning hair. <laughs> but then, oh, the worst part about it was that it was raining. I'm in the middle of Manhattan, and I like got in a cab, and it's raining. I can't see. Yeah, you I got, got like, so the sick to on. my stomach. But then I literally just like laid in bed for 24 hours. I woke up from like a long nap. My eyes felt okay. That was it. It was over. So. This has, been right, my, cool. this has been my ad for this episode. <laughs> I was going to say, right? They seem to cut you to check. But yeah, I'm sold. Wait, how did you decide not to join the military? Well, it wasn't up to me. Like, I took my ASVAP and all that. Um, and I got a really good score. I was about to have like, a, a super fire job. And then um, I couldn't make like the weight requirement for my height. Really? What, you're too lightweight? I'm too lightweight, yeah. Holy shit, really? Yeah, for every like specific height, there is a weight, and you have to be, it's like a four pound. Were you like way too thin for it? Like like 20 pounds. I mean, you're thin, but you seem like you're at a pretty healthy body weight right now, like not like mm -hmm. absurdly. Oh, you were, but you were a lot lighter then? I mean, I was like probably like 120, and they needed me to be 140, just because you're going to lose weight in basic training type right. shit. That does and make I was just like, sense, yeah, yeah, I can't gain that weight. Yeah, how are you going to gain 20 pounds? If you weigh 120, that'd exactly. be hard. Exactly. Damn, that's crazy. So was this kind of like upsetting at the time? It was frustrating because I tried like three for like three months, kept going back, kept going back to try to do it. But um, whoa, you were really dedicated. Yeah, but after that, I was just like, this is a sign. Like this is not supposed to be, you know, what goes down. And I, I have to put off the pilot shit for later. The, so that was the main thing. You just wanted to fly planes and shit. Nice. Yeah. There's a lot of people just kind of like, not a lot, but like certain people are just born with that insatiable desire to fly large aircraft. So I've known a few <laughs> dudes like that over the years where that's just what they want out of life. Yeah. I've never had that. I don't know what it is. I, I'm kind of just fascinated by planes in general, just like, what, how the fuck? 
No, yeah, it's crazy. What the hell? Did, yeah. Actually, now you're kind of fucking me up in the head thinking about it. Like, what the fuck is keeping What the fuck is the plane? <laughs> exactly. Like, what the fuck is that? Like, I'm into it, though. Yeah. Oh, crazy. All right. So, so mm-hmm. you're incredibly hurt and frustrated by the fact that not only can you not join the military and Meshuggah won't let you join the band. <laughs> but so then what do you decide to do? Um, I ended up making music. Like, I tried to go to college. I got accepted to a lot of schools, but didn't have no... Um, like scholarships or nothing, really? couldn't really afford it, which the military would have paid for. Uh-huh. So that was dead. So then that's when I started taking the music more seriously. Uh huh. And so what were after like that that first video and stuff? When does so was Glenn Coco like the big the big breakthrough moment? You yeah, put that video basically. together and that's when people really started fucking with you. Mm-hmm. Interesting. I shot that video and then like the next day I went I flew to London and I stayed there for a few months. They want like who flew you to London or what happened? Um, it um, they were my managers at the time. They were flying me there to it was like a test run basically right. and to uh, like establish a real relationship. So I was there for for a few months, and day one I would have been like, I'm from Philly. Yeah. You're from London. Get the fuck out of here. You don't know shit. <laughs> Am I wrong or is that actually how it worked? I mean, no. Like we actually ended up working out pretty well for like for the year that. It was supposed to be, so okay. it was cool. Like London, that was right when London like really started having some kind of sudden connection with U.S. hip hop again. Right. What year? Like 2013, it's like 14, 14? Okay. 2014. Yeah, that's 2015, true. 2015. That's yeah. when it really started to merge back together a little bit, right? Mm-hmm. Interesting. Do you feel like that's kind of the move for like a young rapper to like do like a serious management type company early on? Were they trying to like really mold you since you were at such an early stage in your career? No, it really wasn't that so much about molding. You know, like not at least not music wise, like uh-huh. maybe helping me develop, you know, how I want it to be perceived and stuff like that. But um, I don't think it's the best move for everybody. Mm-hmm. I think it's cool if you already have an idea of what you want to do, but definitely not if you're really just starting out, like, and just got raw talent. Cause mm-hmm. You should craft yourself how you want to be portrayed as an artist first. How'd you like London? I fuck with London. Mm. I like to go back every year. Really? Yes. That's dope. What, what like, culturally. What what stood out to you that was like particularly shocking? I just, I mean, I think the fact that it was definitely a, a classist society. Uh huh. It just the fact that they have like a hierarchy still, or I mean, a monarchy rather still, even right. if there aren't they aren't doing the um, everyday laws and, and shit like that. Just the fact that it exists kind of baffles my mind, and yeah. like the fact that people like look at money as the way of judging people, and then old money specifically is better than new money, and just right. like the whole shit. Um, Cause like in it Philly, weird. it's like you're probably not even exposed to the many people that are like rich, right? Whereas I mean, in London, yeah. it's like, you, is that, am I wrong? Am I totally wrong? Yeah. Oh wait, I thought someone laughed. My bad. <laughs> Besides you. No, it's a lot of it's a lot of rich it's a lot of rich people in Philly. Okay. You're exposed to them, but they're like a different. They're the kind of rich people like who have a mansion, but also drive a Subaru. Like right. See, that's how I feel about where I grew up, too. Like, out here, you could be in high school, and you're just, like, in high school with, like, Brad Pitt's son or some shit. And, like, that kid has tens or hundreds of millions of dollars in the bank, essentially, like, through his family. And, like, where I grew up, it's just, like, what what would you possibly do to have that much money, and wouldn't you just leave as soon as you got it, right? I mean, yeah. (laughs) Pretty much. Pretty much. But Philly is, like, a a good place for, like, the young professional. It's kind of, like, like healthcare companies and shit are based there. Really? Interesting. Like insurance company, healthcare. What the fuck? Insurance companies. In my mind, I can't imagine what anybody's doing in Philly that isn't just like sort of hanging out. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I've been there so many times just to like ride bikes and stuff, but I never really like. I have no idea like what businesses are thriving in Philly or anything. I don't know. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of food though. There is a lot of food. I seen you eating sandwiches in like two separate interviews today that I watched you. Both of them, you got like a huge hoagie. Oh my god. <laughs> It sounds about right. And I was impressed. I was like, man, you know, like I, like my girlfriend, I couldn't get her to eat a piece of bread if I put a gun to her head. <laughs> You're over here with sandwiches, giant sandwiches. <laughs> Gotta have cheesesteaks like, every now and then. Is, that, no. is that really the thing or is that just what people want you to think about Philly? No, I mean, like, no, cheesesteaks are fire. If you've heard of the place, though, it's probably not good. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, it's good. I think I <laughs> wasted a lot of my calories, like, during the time that I've, like, been spending time in Philly in my life, eating cheesesteaks from Wawa. Oh, you fucked up. Yeah. Why would you? Because you can order it from the little screen. I... And they're everywhere. 
But Wawa is my shit, though. though. <laughs> Not but for the like, cheesesteak. No, nah, that's the last thing I'm getting from Wawa. But everything else is, is valid. Do you ever shoplift from Wawa? Yeah. <laughs> All the time. I'm just picturing you as like a 14-year-old model wearing a Meshuggah shirt, stealing fucking the little hummus cup with the pretzels or something from, from Wawa. I've been trying to own a Wawa for the longest. I wonder what the initial investment is. You can't. They're private. Oh, that's a good point. Yeah, they suck for that. No rappers. Yeah. They probably don't want to have a like a wing stop moment. Oh my god. <laughs> they don't want Rick Imagine. Ross to buy one. <laughs> Yo. Wawa needs to be all over the all over the country. Oh my god, they need Excuse to be me. everywhere. Yeah. Oh, it's all fucked up on the East Coast. It's like Dunkin' Donuts isn't isn't over here like it should be. So Y'all don't have Dunkin' Donuts? We do, but very limited. There's like seven in LA and they're all brand new. They're all from like the last couple of years. It's oh. a whole new wave. So are the donuts out here really that fire? Because I've only had donuts like once. I mean, I'm really not trying to eat donuts at this point in my life. I'm trying to like lose weight. So like mm. donuts aren't really on the menu. Thank you, Lena. Um, but I don't know. There's a lot of like donut places out here that are very, very like gourmet, you know, high end delicacy type places. But they have that everywhere. I feel like, you know, you go to New York and there's like a bakery every couple blocks that's mm-hmm. like a five dollar cupcake. And there's, you know, that's. That's just the thing now. They just convince people, like, look at this incredibly expensive piece of sugar. I don't know. I, be, I just be watching mad BuzzFeed videos, and I'm just like, LA looks really lit with the donuts. Somehow that makes me feel like I understand you better, too, now that I know that you subscribe to BuzzFeed on YouTube. <laughs> Did I just like, expose myself? <laughs> no, that's I cool. I feel like there's like, people look at me funny when I'm like always on BuzzFeed. It's interesting to me because BuzzFeed has kind of got this reputation for being this like mega liberal, like crazy place online. But I've been <laughs> I've been watching BuzzFeed since like it first, first launched. Like yeah. I don't know why, but for some reason I've known about it since like day one. Mm-hmm. So I'm always interested to see where it goes. I'm into it. Yeah. I'm into the videos. Them in Vox. Vox. Pretty much. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Like everybody out here is going to be like, oh, she's part of the liberal machinery. Oh, shit. She's, oh, a, no. she's a Hillary support. No, I have so many fans <laughs> that are going to just hear that and be like, oh, she's one of them. Oh, no, not, shit, me. No. not me. No. No, actually, no. Did you vote? I did vote. Good. I did. For Donald Trump? Anyone? No. So you're very happy. <laughs> oh, shit. I was sick that my state went red for the first time in my lifetime. It really did. I am from Pennsylvania, so. Wow, I didn't even think We're always that. That a crazy. swing state. And we went red, and I was just like, oh, shit. That hurts. It does. Usually, they just depend on Philly and Pittsburgh to, like, keep us blue. Yeah. You know? God, it's so fucking crazy, too, to think that, like, the whole state could be, like, corrupted by that, the way it works, you know? Fuck that electoral electoral college. Yeah, that shit is a joke. I don't know. We gotta get rid of that. Yeah. They gotta get rid of that, but they'll never get rid of it because, like, the person in power has always won because of it. Yeah, seriously. Because that's how you win. So they're not going to change the rules because <laughs> that's how they won. It sucks. And never has that been more true than Trump. This is true. Yeah. But, all right, where were we? We were talking about Wawa. We were talking about yeah. cheesesteaks. Mm-hmm. Um, have you ever had an ex in the game, like a boyfriend type character who sort of had like an impact on your rap career in any way? Was that ever like a guiding force? Because that's how I know you in the first place. <laughs> no names, right? Or do we do names? <laughs> like, I just saw that shit coming. Like, well, I had to ask. Sentence. You know that's like, how I know you. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting for it to slide in there, but that was a really cool segue. Was um, it good? Yeah. yeah. Uh, but yeah, I've had, I've had inspiration from exes. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. So, was there one particular long term ex that kind of did it to you? <laughs> in terms of like you know that being uh driving you to to work to rap um did he inspire a few songs in a row yeah okay uh, you're talking about angry songs after the fact no not oh, necessarily okay. angry just inspiration mm-hmm. from life life experiences interesting see you know because i was thinking earlier i'm like you know i'm definitely not going to say the dude's name, but then I'm listening to your SoundCloud today, and I hear you like basically calling him out, describing, oh, describing shit. him so so obviously that I'm like, oh, okay, I guess this ain't too secret. But it wasn't a shot, though. No, yeah. you can name names. Shout out to Dash. That's my man's. Yeah, he's a good guy. But well, as far as I know, um, I didn't date him. Yeah, you know, <laughs> say, but yeah, that's cool. Inspired music. But when you said the FTP and Ralph Lauren line, I was just like, oh but my that God, wasn't that's a hilarious. Shot. Yeah, it's actually really funny, it's too. It's actually like a compliment. Yeah, it's a good compliment because mm-hmm. it's like, oh, you got nice clothes. Exactly. Yeah. I, I would never date someone who didn't. 
They, how, do you meet, how, how did that, how long did that relationship last? Like two years. Two years. And when did it end? Last year. Interesting. Did it end bad? What happened? Did it end because he went to jail? Oh. Oh, shit. No. Oh. I don't know nothing about that. <laughs> I don't even know if he went to jail. It's just he's like super clean now. He's not on any drugs or anything. So I'm like, oh, damn, he must have gone to jail or something. I guess I just assumed. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Is that weird, though? Do you feel like that kind of like undermines how people view your rap career? No, because I can still rap. Mm-hmm. I guess it'd be different if I wasn't like I'm, I'm comfortable and confident in my music and I, and I was making music prior to any relationship. So what's it like being in like a rapper relationship? Do things come up? Do you ever get an, an argument and then you just like start recording diss tracks about each other? <laughs> no? No, not at all. Like, oh, you didn't put the seat down in the toilet, so here, I got some <laughs> bars for track. you. Yeah, you write a diss track on the mirror in the, in the, the steam. Never. I feel like anytime you date someone who's going to be in the same field as you, that you should, um, you should believe that they are good at what they do. Mm-hmm. And then you never really have any issues. Mm-hmm. But is it kind of weird because it's like, Oh man, rappers are such egotistical creatures, you know? Mm-hmm. It's hard for them to coexist, basically, is how I put it. You know that thing that happens when you're hanging out with somebody who raps and you play some other rapper and then you realize that it's like they don't view that rapper like you do where you're just like, oh, this is a good song. <laughs> you're like, no, they view that as like that's one of many people who are coming from my spot. A little bit of that. No. <laughs> is there a code? No, do, do, you, do you feel strongly that after you're in a relationship that you should like not air out parts of it or not speak publicly about it? Is that important to you? Yeah, I feel like you should respect each other. Mm -hmm. Once you are in a relationship with someone or even just lay down with someone, you become that person's equal. and You should have the same respect that you you would hope that they have for you in public. Yeah, ideally. Is that like the longest relationship you had in your life? Yeah. Okay. How do you feel about dating at this point in your life? Is that like detrimental to your career, the way you view it? Uh, No, as long as that person isn't detrimental to your career. Mm Mm-hmm. And um, doesn't and can understand. So I mean, there's there's big pluses to dating people who are in your field because then it's a lot of explaining you don't have to do. Yeah, that's true. It's hard. Like I think, well, for a rapper girl, woman, mm-hmm. it feels like it would be kind of hard for like a regular guy who's a manager of Foot Locker to like understand what she's going through. Even even just this, even just all the guys that she's going to be around that are going to probably That's hit on her. That's usually it. Yeah. It's usually just kind of like with the regular nigga, kind of like, damn, so I got to be comfortable with my, my place with you because you're about to be around a bunch of niggas that got more money than me that I probably listen to. <laughs> yeah. You know, and all of that shit. And who can relate to you on levels I can't. Mm. And in that in that respect, you just got to be confident in your situation. And like from your perspective, it's like not only am I dealing with how hard it is to be a woman in the music industry, but I'm also dealing with this guy that I'm dating, probably assuming that I'm doing a worse job than I actually am at <laughs> dealing with those situations. If Absolutely. you end up with an insecure little fucking fuckboy, right? I mean, people don't really start showing their true self until like a year into the shit. Like um. people send their PR for the first 12 months. You know, there's a lot of truth to that. That's very, very true. A, a year or two in, that's when you start. Like throwing, surprise. Throw a plate at her head. <laughs> hey, we're getting close. We're about a year in. I'm about to break a friggin' oh, sofa over your head. <laughs> no, that's true. You think the year is like the mark though? Because I think that that's kind of the question too. Is a lot of people show their whole hand like you know two weeks in, you realize like, oh, this girl's a psychopath. Okay. I guess it depends on when you start fucking around. Like I think there is there there's a lot to be said for people who start fucking around mm-hmm. in the summer. And stick to the shit. So you think summer is the time to start? I think if you start in the summer, that that person must really fuck with you. If if it continues. That's true. Because if you start fucking with somebody during the winter, then you might just need somebody to cuddle with. Exactly. Keep warm. Yeah. I know too many niggas who are dating bitches right now for a place to stay. Really? Yes, that's a very (laughs) real thing. Well. I mean, we're getting into sort of a controversial ter- terrain here, but I've said to dudes before, like, because, you know, they'll be, they're like 19, they're trying to make it as a skateboarder, a BMX rider, whatever, and they're like <laughs> just losing their mind over this girl. And I'm like, bro, use her for a place to stay, and that's <laughs> See, it. Don't let her fuck you up in the head like y'all that. Y'all be really saying this, though. That's how I know it's true. Like, <laughs> y'all really tell your friends to do this shit. You ever feel like you've been in that position, though, where you have a guy just sort of using you for, like, beer money and a couch or something? Never. No? Never gets that far. Okay. That's good. 
you got to hold yourself to a certain standard as a, a female rapper because <laughs> exactly. you stand out as a symbol of like how all these other little girls should be handling themselves, right? You ever feel like that? Like you have to be a role model kind of? <laughs> You, you it's know? over for no. that. That, that died a long time ago. <laughs> okay, that's good. But do you feel comfortable, like, really documenting, like, all the stuff that you have going on in your life? Like, when you talk about doing drugs and stuff, does that sort of strike you as, like, a decision? Um, that was definitely a decision because I'm, I'm pretty secretive and mm-hmm. pretty private about most parts of my life. So whenever I do say something, it seems like like a, like a, like a... It's well thought out. Yeah, definitely. And I just feel like if I'm sharing a part of my life, it's, it's because I think it can help somebody else because I really like to keep most of the shit to myself. Hmm. Do you feel like like the rap thing, because you, you were saying you wanted to be a writer early on, right? Mm-hmm. Do you think that, that it, it takes care of the part of your soul that needed to be a writer? Like, does it fill that gap? Yeah, all the way. Because mm-hmm. it's like um, when I was trying to write stories, I just couldn't finish them. I didn't have the attention span for it, whatever. And with a song, I'm able to complete a whole thought in a, in a couple of verses as opposed to chapters and chapters of writing. Mm-hmm. It makes it a lot easier for me. To, as long as I can get the full thought out and then in a song form, it's fine. Well, in a song, too, it's like you have like a relatively limited amount of space to say what you want to say. Whereas like if you were going to try to write a book, it's like you could just write forever. It's not like you're going to feel like you have to stop at a certain point, right? Yeah, but I just feel like I just want to use the amount of words necessary mm-hmm. like i'm pretty direct about it like it's why probably why i don't like poetry either like mm-hmm. it's like they're just dragging out one thought right it can be said in you four know, bars i kind of think that too because it's like kind of har- harder to appreciate poetry once you have an appreciation for rap which is like yeah like let's this is a format. This is how long it takes. This is where it's going to fit in. This is what this, this weird thing called a hook is going to appear. And that's going to make it catchier as people listen to it. <laughs> exactly. This is the cover art. Exactly. The cover art has to be anime. It has to be like a screenshot from an anime. And um, you have to talk about Zans. Oh, shit. At least once. Yeah. At and you got to dye your hair purple and, and dread it. Oh. Yours is red. So it's, it's getting there. <laughs> Shots fired. No, you don't understand. I listen to like... 10, 20 hours worth of like my fans' songs on stream over the past couple of days. And they all look like that? Well, there's a lot of similar... Th- it's like, at a certain point, it's like, okay, are you all going to wear a Supreme shirt? Like, are you all going to mention Zans? It's just weird. I'm about to say, it's not even that many Zans left. You don't believe that? <laughs> I bought some fake Zans the other day. See what I mean? Shit, shit, was is all right. shit was all right. Shit is crazy. Shit is crazy. It's all right. I might take the other half of one later. When you just start seeing people try to sell you blatantly fake Pills. Mm. It means there's no more drugs. Left. You think that? Like, but like, come on. Find a girl. Just like script. chipping on the side. You gotta find a girl with a script. I know a girl I could go see in the valley right now. I got thirty fucking big fat green Zans off for no problem. I guarantee they're real. Well, the green ones, I believe. People are still <laughs> buying Xanax that still say Xanax. Like. Yeah, but they all say Xanax on them. It's just most of them are still fake anyway. Mm. Okay, speaking of Xanax, what's up with all those rocks all over your neck there? You got stones <laughs> on your other Xanax. <laughs> no, got tourmaline here. Got some aquamarine. Th- those they have names. These are like These what are are they, crystals. What do they do? These I don't know really anything crystals. about this. You got to tell me. I mean, different crystals mean different things as far as like your chakras and what they help with and um, turning, converting good energy into bad energy. And the shit that I got into um, when I started practicing like Buddhism in like eighth grade. And, really? Um, yeah. And also I have my mother's ring. Amazing. Do you feel very strongly about the Buddhism thing? What does that mean to you? Yeah, I mean, before that, I didn't have much direction. I was an I ident- identified as an atheist, um, and in that respect, I still do identify as an atheist, you mm-hmm. know. But as far as Buddhism and the ideals and just the way of life and things like that, I can definitely agree with, and it gives me some sense of like peace. That's what's up. And can like trying to center myself. Yeah, it's like a way to view the world. But it's, more or less. Yeah. God, I wish Buddhism was more popular than all the other religions. <laughs> yeah, that'd be seriously. great. I would like to see more people with rocks around their neck. Crystals, sorry. One time I did acid and this girl once stopped talking about crystals the whole time though and it kind of drove me crazy. Uh, yeah. At a certain point I was like, I just don't want to hear about the rocks anymore. You still do acid? I only did it like two times in my life. Yeah. One, one time the girl wouldn't shut up about the fucking crystals. So that was... And then the other time I vlogged it and I got like a million views. You saw my acid? Yeah. Which oh, was weird. Shit. Well, my friend had to like film the second half of it because I was no longer capable of like I didn't know who I was anymore. Were so. you at a festival or something? You no, South we, by Southwest. We, we climbed up the, like the side of this mountain, like a couple miles from here. Oh. But it's like turn up. the 
trendy ass mountain that like everybody goes and climbs. So oh, that same one that I see. It's Griffith Griffith Park or some shit. <laughs> we climbed up to that, which is also like that was a weird thing. Is like maybe don't run up a mountain while you're on acid because I got very out of breath and I really started to think I was gonna overheat and die. Oh shit. You do a lot of drugs, like uh, acid and mushrooms and shit. Not so much anymore. You, you experimented with it. How old are you? How old do you think I am? Three hundred. <laughs> oh, I walked into that one. Every rapper says three. I think I might be the first time to interview a guest three hundred. Yeah, but now I'm 22. 22, really? Mm -hmm. oh, you're an old soul, I gotta say. Oh, thanks. Yeah, you have like a, you feel like you're quite experienced. I feel a little seasoned now. Yeah. Yeah. Seasoned is a good word for it. What uh, when do you live in New York now full time? Yeah. Do you love it? I do. In comparison to Philly. I don't love it more. Oh, okay. They're too close. There's definitely a lot to do. A lot more to do. A lot more, but it's like I mean, I like. I paid my dues in, in New York as far as like I did the whole like starving artist thing, living mm -hmm. sleeping on floors, shit like that, and and I have a, a respect for it. But do I love everything about it? No. It's such a thing though, like going to New York and being like that that kind of like nineteen year old and just sort of like going with the flow and trying to meet people and everything. And then at a certain point, you're like, well, actually, maybe I want to have a bed. Exactly, and then yeah. you just that's when you really start getting it together. Like, that's a little question though: is can you? maintain that like creative 19 year old i'm in williamsburg for the first time mm -hmm. spunk spirit and then also like transition into being an adult at a certain point as well i try to give myself little reality checks like very small reality checks like for the entire time our apartment never had a microwave and like little shit like that would force me to be an adult because it means like, damn, it means I got to cook something or I at least got to heat it up in the oven or So you think that like helped whatever. you to have like a, a limit on certain yeah, luxuries? Yeah, like I was staying in like a, a five floor walk up mm -hmm. for, the, for the longest time. So, or like I was, I was always on some super high floor like that mm -hmm. or we would go a God, long time. God, that's so normal in New York though. They're like, exactly. meet somebody and you walk up to their house and it's like seven floors, you're drenched in sweat. Yeah. Exactly. But that shit made me grow up a little bit for sure. God, I don't miss that. In LA, that, mm. I don't think that would really happen. It's like you'd have to have an elevator if the bill is seven. <laughs> I can't even think about it. It sounds, sounds horrendous. It would be. Yeah. In the summer, especially, yeah, now. So, <laughs> what's your relationship like with the rest of the ASAP mob? Like, you, you had this initial like meeting with Yams. I've always kind of thought of you as that, as like sort of like a fringe, not a member, but somebody <laughs> who sort of like came up around the same time that they were, you know, mm -hmm. sort of associated with them. Dash, too, you know, it's sort of like that general era of like east coast hip-hop right yeah mm -hmm. def. um no it's still all love with all of them a lot of them live out here now so mm -hmm. i don't see everyone as much but whenever i see them it's all love is the asap movement still strong in new york i feel i mean like yeah like it, they shit has never like wavered mm -hmm. at any point it's weird because they were like the last like big significant new york rap movement has it been really? Yeah. Who who since then? Like Bobby Schmurda had his little spark, but that didn't, Bobby Schmurda, didn't work yeah. out. Yeah. It was about to be. That was about to be a wave. That would have been fun. About to be a hit. Yeah, I would have liked to see how far he could have took it. To be honest. I think he'll. I think. I, I think there's know. unreleased music somewhere. Yeah. Show. I feel mm -hmm. like it has to be. Well. That shit was too good. Damn, six years is a long ass time. Seven years, however, until he gets out. That's rough. Niggas drop tapes all the time. <laughs> who do you who do you faith. actually okay, I went on your sound today, I noticed that you shared a twenty one Savage bank account. Oh, I did? Yeah. <laughs> cool. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, that's really cool of her. Because like I love that song and I'm glad that like as I'm listening to her songs, I can listen to one of my other favorite songs right now. Mm -hmm. It's nice. So who else do you listen to besides Twenty One Savage, who you're apparently a huge fan of? I'm the super huge fan of Twenty One Savage. Me too. Um like hip hop wise, like I feel like I'm listening to the same people I've been listening to for a minute. I listen to a uh, some uh, to the bro Lucky X often, oh, yeah. frequently. That's um, so bizarre that he was such an early introduction into rap for you. Yeah, wait, huh? I don't know because you were talking about like acid rap before. Oh, yeah. That's just like. A strange place to start hip hop wise. No, that's not where I started. Oh, okay. But I mean, I remember that's what I was listening to directly after high school. Yeah. But in the last 
few like years or so. I mean, I'm, I've always been the big Migos fan. Oh, okay. I've always been the big Takeoff fan in particular. Takeoff in particular. Yes. So a lot of people consider not him the my slacker of the group. And they're dumb for that. Really? Niggas not giving my mans his proper due. What is it about him that you like so much? I heard. What all, is there not? Well, I heard he's the least involved in the creative process. What about all them years that Offset wasn't around? Who was the was other like Migo? Year? Who was the other Migo, though? So you like a guy who holds the family down even when... I think Takeoff okay. has the best bars. Really? I yeah. think Quavo is a hook god. I think Offset is the most versatile. And I think Takeoff has the best bars. Interesting. Like, bars. Right. Sometimes I feel like a lot of other people have thought about this a lot more than me. I have. Because <laughs> I'd be mad. I'm like, how you just going to hate on my mans like that? Like, I just know how? that somebody told me, somebody who I definitely believe told me that Takeoff does not have very much creative uh, involvement, and that's why you very rarely see him like doing a hook. He's, you know, and I was like, damn, that kind of actually makes sense to me. Yeah, he doesn't seem like he's as up in it as the other guys. But I mean, you're saying you like a traditionalist, you know? I fuck with Takeoff. Okay. Based off, especially off that first tape of YRN. Mm -hmm. Well, my first tape listening to them, I don't, I don't think that was their first ever, but that was the first one. Oh, wasn't YRN the album? But there was a mixed tape, right? I mean, I'm saying why I am, but yeah, yeah, like Young Rich Niggas, like the, the actual first tape. Right. Like Hannah Montana and all that shit on it. Yeah, that was beautiful. That was a great era. Whole new level to rap music. Where do you feel like you're at exactly. in the rap game, like right now? Like, what do you, what, where is your career at and where do you want to take it? Um, I think it's all right. I think that it's progressing now better than it was before. I'm a lot more focused and a lot more in tune and know exactly what I want. And I just want to keep taking it in the direction that I'm going as far as just showing who, everyone who I am as an artist and like what I actually do get inspired by and what I actually do listen to uh -huh. um, and am influenced by that's not music related and shit like that. Since so much of our careers are based on, you know, people really feeling like they can get to know you and relate to you. Right. Um, as if like the music doesn't say enough. And... I'm going to retire before I'm in like my 30s. I don't want to be like 30 something still dropping mixtapes and shit like that. Right. Um I want to have I did. I developed at 30. Oh, did you stop? Yeah. Yeah. I had like 10 mixtapes. And it just became like what? I'm just kidding. I didn't really. I can't, I can't lie to you like that. That would be really <laughs> fucked up. <laughs> if I just fully like convinced you that I used to be a rapper, god, uh -huh. all right. Yeah. No, but yeah, I feel you for sure. But okay, so you you're saying like you're more focused now. Do you feel like you were kind of like not taking it as seriously or that you weren't as motivated as you you could have been? Yeah, there was a, a good point in time where I was just like lost in sauce. So I was just getting high and just like not focused on what I set out to do mm -hmm. and not really taking into account like this is my, my life because sometimes it doesn't feel like a job. Mm -hmm. and you have to like remind yourself like this is work every day. Because it's like hanging out in the studio, smoking weed and drinking lean is like kind of part of the job. Right. And it's very easy for that to like take over the rest of it. Not, not, mm -hmm. it's not, not that it's part of the job, but it's something that would be considered very ordinary to do at your job. Yeah. So it's like, you know, can you toe the line when you get involved with that? That's what's weird. The more I hang out with rappers, the more I have to start turning down drugs. Because like, yeah. if you're around rappers every day, all of a sudden you got to say no to Zans every day. Or at least most of the Zans. Is this your experience with hip hop, which is like Xanax? And lean. Uh, yes. Xanax is like the preferred well, thing over Zans here. Zans are huge in general. I guess lean is kind of the one that's like specifically like a rap drug. Like you would never hear someone talk about lean if they weren't like a rapper or into rap. Never. Yeah. From not my, really. my experience. Nah, that's not really too many people's preferred vice. You talk about lean and like on the, oh, I was just in Boston hanging out with this dude uh, mm -hmm. who I interviewed who like used to be a heroin addict and I mentioned lean and he's baffled by the concept of it. He's like, what the fuck are they doing? I told him how much it costs. He's like, <laughs> what? Yeah. 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 That's I did, I've really stopped sipping lean like that like after like act was gone. After the act went away? Damn. It wasn't that deep. You know what you me. like. You know? <laughs> yeah, like this whole complicated shit, finding mm. the right flavors of soda, soda, making my teeth fall out, I'm good. How do you get the name China? That, that is my name. That's your real name? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay, good. That's good. <laughs> because I've kind of noticed that there's a lot of rap girls who are, not a lot, but I was thinking about that girl, Asian Doll, mm -hmm. and I was like, okay, we got Asian Doll, we got China. Is there a movement going on of <laughs> female rappers appropriating Asian culture for oh, their rap shit. names? <laughs> but if it's your no. real name, then we can definitely remove yeah. you from that narrative. Yeah. Okay, mm -mm. that's good. Who do you? Okay, when you and I, I feel like this is kind of like a weird question, but do you? Who do you fuck with on the female rapper level? 
like you look at that you like their stuff? Um, as far as my rappers go, usually I just listen to the homies. Um, Princess Nokia is the homie. Mm, she's dope, yeah. Uh, I fuck with Narf. I fuck with Tommy Genesis. Um, I listen to uh, Cash Doll, uh, Lil Sims. Um, I gotta catch up on some of these names. You should know these names. See, I'm trying, man. I'm not naming no super. Obscure. You know that? Well, I know like all the first ones you named, but then you said a few more that I didn't know. But yeah, one of those I named a UK person too. Oh, okay. Well, that's fucked up. That's like a totally different language. UK rappers. I don't know. Oh, Never heard of one. Oh, shade. <laughs> nah, I'm just kidding. I like it. I just feel like, I feel like sometimes, like, the more of a hype beast a person is, the more likely it is that they're going to pretend that they have, like, a genuine interest in UK rap. And, like, a lot of times I find, like, that those are people who are just, like, straight bullshitting. Yeah. You kind of know what I mean? It's like, okay, I feel the same way about in like the 90s and shit when there would be like super lyrical rappers to the extent where you couldn't even understand a fucking word that they were saying mm -hmm. and then people would be like I fucking love that shit and I'm like yes because you don't actually like rap you like the kind of rapper you don't understand what the <laughs> fuck they're saying that's why you like it is that a genre now? I mean I just feel like you during think? the 90s there was like a level of that it was like and it's like you like that because you I felt okay I felt the same way I had a girlfriend when I was 19 and she hated rap and then Jay-Z uh, who was it the remix uh, Danger Mouse remixed it and called it the Grey Album and, and or no what was it the what? yeah the Grey Album he mixed in all the Beatles samples and she loved that and I'm like yes exactly you love that because you don't actually like this Ew, yeah that was gonna sound sounds was even it worse. good it was very popular at the time I have to say the Grey Album was really popular but I personally was like, why the fuck am I going to listen to the Black Album a bunch more times just so I can hear a stupid Sgt. Pepper <laughs> sample in the background? <laughs> it doesn't do it for me. God, you know, oh, as long can. as I'm just hating, you know what I hated too? Remember when Diplo put out that remix, uh, that album of all Gucci songs and he remixed it and made them all EDM'd out? No. That shit sucked and was super popular. That sounds tragic. God, why can't they just let rappers rap and leave them the <laughs> fuck alone? <up? laughs> oh, I don't know. What am I even talking about? When's the last time you drank a Four loco? Oh shit! <laughs> um, oh, like not even that long ago. I'm not right. even gonna front. Like maybe like two weeks ago. Mm. Oh really? I had a couple sips. Holy shit! Didn't know. Oh, a couple sips. Wait, 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 wait. It what? We're not talking the OG recipe. Obviously, that that's like act. You know what? That wasn't even a foot. That was like a, a, a something Rita. So oh, it's been a minute. Really? Yeah, it's been a minute. OG Four Locos yeah. are the the activists of. Yo, that shit used Caffeinated to have me alcohol. fucked up yeah. in high school. That was a wave. High school, that was the cheapest, yeah. Ugh. That was the cheapest. But I seen that that scene in ever. the Refinery Twenty One interview where you like. Oh, I pulled out those four locos, right? But you're telling me that those were really sitting there, like all. Those the, were sitting there for years. The liquid had like dried up. There's like nah, nothing. it wasn't even dried up. It's alcohol, like. You should have drank it. Alcohol doesn't even like go bad, does it? I, Okay, but there's all these sugar in that. How are you don't have bugs all over? I it? mean, I don't know. It was in the basement. That's your mom's house, right? Yeah, that was. Um, you might want to hire a maid sometime next time you get a check. Because somebody, somebody should have knew about those four locals. It was in the basement, in the cut, hidden. I mean, it's, I did it's my nice. Job. I believe you. But that that's just amazing. Job. To me, I, I don't think I could pull anything like that. Like, like if I throw away a McDonald's wrapper in my trash can at my mom's house, the mm -hmm. next day she's going to be like, had some McDonald's, huh? <laughs> like, she will know. No. She I'll notices was, too was much. Oblivious. Oh, well. Oblivious. That's nice. Yeah, I, uh, cool. man, those things would kill you back in the day. Before I found out about real drugs, Four Locos, man, that was it. <laughs> Where you found out about real drugs? That's cool. Yeah, it was cool because, like, the caffeine would carry you for a long time. But then, like, I had, like, at least one night where I was, like, I, I went to somebody's house, and then the caffeine wore off, and it just hit me, like, oh, you're so drunk. Off of beer, right? Well, off of Wasn't Four it supposed Loco, to only but... be, like, 10% alcohol or something like that? Yeah, but that's super high. Is it? Compared to like a fucking beer that's like 3%, I think. I don't know. I don't know. I miss Four Loco. And I want it back. <laughs> all right. Let's go get some. I feel like they exist. That would be a really weird way for us to spend the rest of the night is if we all got a bunch of Four Locos. No? No? Well, if you dump a five-hour energy in it, I'm pretty sure it's almost exactly the same thing as what you used to buy on the shelf. Yeah, probably. Yeah, what's the difference? Do those still exist, though? Oh, yeah. Really? Yeah. I haven't seen the, that you in a You don't see them anymore? They got them at like probably every 7-Eleven. They got a whole rack of those little fucking plastic containers. Oh, shit. You know, I didn't know an interesting conversation. I thought it was interesting. I was having my friend the other day. I said to him, I said, like, why are there not more f popular female rappers? Do you think it's just that, like, women are not as good at rapping as men? Is that, like, the conclusion we're forced to have? And he said, 
no, it's not that. He goes, it's because think about the roles that we've carved out for rappers for the most part. Like, mo- like he goes, think about 21 Savage. He's bragging about how much drugs he does. He's bragging about, you know, shooting people. Not bragging, but he's acknowledging that this may have happened. He's talking about how many women he slept with. He's like, think about every single one of those things and apply it to a woman and think about how it would be viewed. If they had a girl who was like really into telling you how much drugs she did, most people, I think, would take that and be like, oh, she's a junkie. Or like, oh, you fuck a ton of dudes. Oh, you're a fucking, you're disgusting, <laughs> whatever. Like, the, a lot of people would take it that way. And, you know, oh, you're a girl and you shot somebody. Like, oh, maybe we should take your kids away. Maybe we should send you away. Like, you're crazy. And I, that kind of troubled me. I was like, man, that's fucked up. Because mm-hmm. that still to this day, there's not that many, like, acceptable spaces for rappers to fill in a way. If what he's saying is true there. Um, he's absolutely, tr- definitely right. Mm. Telling the truth. How do you feel about that, though? I, I think mean, you should be able to shoot somebody. I mean, I'm pretty, I'm pretty honest in my raps. Mm-hmm. Sometimes people just think I'm talking about other shit, but I, at at one point I was really taking it there, mm-hmm. as far as like talking about like the type of shit I was doing or like the type of drugs I was doing. And mm-hmm. if you if you really knew what I was talking about, like if you really were as into shit as you as you would claim, then you would have knew what I was talking about immediately. But it went right over the people's heads who were you know fake. But do you think it's weird that, that, like, you as a woman, if you're, like, happy and content and you seem like you have, like, a good, good, happy life, that, like, somehow that's not, that's, that's not appealing as a rapper. Like, we don't want to hear a rap. Like, as soon as a rapper hits that point where it's like, oh, I've got a nice family life, everything's mm-hmm. going great, it's like all of a sudden people don't want to hear it anymore. It's like you have to be in this state of commotion for people to accept you in a weird way. Yeah, I think you have to have enough shit going on. Like, since music is based off real life experience, or it's supposed to be, you you should people would it like if you had a relatable life. So once you're super rich and chilling, you're only gonna have so much people who can relate. People gonna want to relate, but that's only gonna take you so far. Yeah, once you're rich and chilling, it becomes. Well, once you're like mega famous, then it becomes like TMZ rap, where it's like you have to like like Jay Z knocked it out of the park with that album. He basically mm-hmm. made like a super like real hip hop album that is probably the kind of shit that he actually vibes with. But then he also like threw in all this gossip that just like set the world on fire for a few days, and it just worked perfectly. Like I mm-hmm. I, I never in a million years would have expected that that album would get like the kind of reaction that it got from people where it seemed like people sort of universally loved it yeah i was happy to see that yeah me too um fuck <laughs> what <laughs> sorry that was a weird tangent i just went on there um all right so so oh yeah you want to ask about too is like what what is uh does asap ills like help you with your career or anything what's your relationship like with him because i see you guys hanging out a lot in the videos and stuff Oh, I mean, yeah, he um, he was inspo in that in the song Glen Coco. That's like my brother, though. Oh, from day one. Them. Yeah, like oh, we've okay. been tight for a long time. Oh, okay. Um, and I still have a real close relationship with him. Interesting. Him pretty often. It's like from a like a musical perspective, is he a collaborator? Um, nah. Oh, okay. We at that after that, like we really just developed a friendship and. Do you have anyone really how it was, that you work on. with on music primarily, like? Uh, collaborators per se or like producers that you feel like you have a really good relationship with? Um, there's a couple of producers like I, I'm real close with one of my producers named Cloud Atrium and another one Heaven and Stereo and uh, one Fifth Dimension also but they a lot of them don't live in America or are younger uh-huh. and can't do as much stuff all love the time. A, love a 16 year old producer. Yo, this shit is crazy. Like, this shit is bizarre. <laughs> and then Shout out 16 in the year old. Nowhere. <laughs> there's a producer named 16 year old that's really popping right now, too. I don't really? know if you know about that, but I think that's pretty funny because there's like. Is that some super internet stuff that I should know about? It's it's, it's underground, but he's, he's bubbling up. But I just think it's funny that his name is 16 year old because it's like there are a lot of like 16 year old producers out there. I think it's great. And they're that fucking he, good. Yeah, it's crazy. They're fucking good. Because they have all the time in the world. And all the tools. I think that that's cool, though. Yeah. You can get, like, all the all the shit you need in, like, 100 bucks. That's true. God, can you imagine how weird that would be if, like, Jay-Z put out an album and had, like, a 16-year-old kid producing it? Maybe not him. Didn't he do that before, though? Didn't he have a super young producer once? I mean, like... Bugging? I mean, he's generally credited for, like, breaking Just Blaze and, Jay- and Kanye with their production. I don't know if he ever had, like, a really young producer, though. Oh, shit. I don't know, maybe. I don't know. Just making shit up. Who's who's your favorite woman rapper of all time? Missy Elliott. Really? Okay, that's actually probably like the right answer, if I, to be <laughs> honest. 
Yeah. Because we were having, I, I was having that conversation, I think, with Ben Baller about like greatest female rapper of all time, and mm-hmm. I, I don't think she came up, and I think well, that's really she didn't unfair. come up. I don't think that I thought to go in that direction with it. That's fucked up. Yeah, it is fucked up. I think we kind of went right into like up. a Foxy Brown, Lil Kim debate right away, and then I got kind of lost in the shuffle there. Yeah, no, it's Missy Elliott. Hmm. Shout out to them though, but it's Missy Elliott. Yeah, that's true. Um, so, Period. music release wise, what mm-hmm. do you got in the works? I'm about to drop this little EP actually in a few weeks. Okay. Music to die to, and that's gonna be a lot of fun. Exciting. I'm really happy with the songs on there. Dope. Um, new videos, new visuals, anything else? All of those. All. New beefs. Nah, never. You're not gonna start a big beef to promote the next day. I'm not that type of bitch. <laughs> It's not beef if we're making songs. That's what they do these days. Oh, or you could do a fake relationship. That's a big way to release your album now these days, too. It's so fucking weird. Not into that? People are fucking weird. Okay. People are the fuck weird. God. (laughs) I I can't lie, though. I would love, not with you, but I would love to be involved with that in general. If, like, somebody hit me up, like, hey, we got this this girl. She really wants to break her album. We were wondering if she could fake date you for a few weeks. I'd be like, oh, yeah, sure. That's a great idea. (laughs) She is bizarre. Okay, but if, and I'm not doubting their love. But if you're Amber Rose and they hit you up and they're like, listen, 21's got an album coming out. We got a check for you. All you got to do is hang out with them for a couple weeks. I'm in there. If I'm Amber Rose, it sounds great. It sounds super fun. I'm not commenting on this <laughs> shit. You got you to gotta get me fucked up. I'm not saying that it's a fake relationship. I'm just saying that if it was. No, he's pulling up. You think he's pulling up? I heard him. When she said that, she said like, it's so great having a guy who'll just pull up on someone for me. I'm like, what are you talking about? Like, Listen, Amber Rose is from Philly and oh, I respect right. so you it, absolutely okay? absolutely can't disrespect her. You feel me? Yeah. Amber Rose obviously has the golden box. Like, There's got to be something going it's on. It's some golden box, easily. It has to be. I respect it. Whatever. Can you imagine that? If there was like really something like out of this world special about it. That the, gotta that... be. <laughs> what other explanation is there? I don't know. I just, fire. I refuse to accept that there's like such a wide variety of box that like one <laughs> one side of it is just somehow able to seduce every rapper. I don't know. I, I think it's something you, you're born with. The, the box? The sauce? I think you just got to be from Philly. I think that's true too, but I don't know. I dated a girl from Philly and she's, well, no, she's cool, but it was, I wasn't, yeah, I didn't get lost in the sauce, I guess. You were a strong person. I was a little too strong. Mm-hmm. Or she was a little too strong. Yeah. <laughs> Anything <laughs> else we should clear up here? <laughs> now that we've got done ridiculing the women of Philadelphia. No, exactly. Yeah, That's what I was saying. You were standing up for them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. Anything else you want the world to know? Any uh, shout outs or anything? Shout out to Gucci Man. <laughs> well, ain't that a fact. We should end every podcast like that. I just, I'm just enjoying watching his, like, him tour the world. Like, it's great. You know, I got 60,000 retweets by screenshot. Yo, you're probably uh, where I first seen the pictures. Yeah. yeah definitely. What God, that was my best meme moment possibly ever. You want to know something else really amazing is that he's got an autobiography that's going to be out in like a month and a half, and they sent me an advanced copy, and it's fucking fantastic. It's so cool, because if you love his mixtapes, then it like gives you the the history so that you know what kind of state of mind he was sort of in in all the, like okay uh, I think it's Trap House Three I listened to it the other oh day oh my god stop he's depressed on that tape like he's sad over fucking Keisha because she had decided to be done with him and stuff and when you listen to it he might not specifically be saying it over and over but you could tell that he's sad about a girl it's like it never really would have made sense to me until I had I think I honestly have another copy that I can let you have oh my god. yeah because they sent me two copies. Don't book. fuck with me. I, I, Are if, you we, if I have it, I'll let you borrow it for sure, for sure. Yeah, okay, because, yeah. wow. It's an advanced copy, too. I really think that getting that two months in advance is like the coolest shit that ever happened to me. Yeah, that might be the coolest shit that ever happened to you. God, I hope it's in there. I'm going to really let you down. Jeez. Damn. So, like, yeah, I just have a question. Like, how many memes do you have saved in your, in your camera log? You know, the thing about TH. memes is it's not like getting into karate where it's like you'll always be able to look down at that belt and tell where you are it's like as a meme <laughs> enthusiast i really i don't know where i fall on the spectrum of, of meme making you know so you make them i so try these sometimes you, like, i mean you. she gets to see all the ones that don't make it onto twitter but so I your try. drafts are just looking crazy right now god you don't know I, I honestly i definitely type like five tweets and then delete it before every one that i post because i have such a fucking weird sense of humor that it's like i think things are hilarious that then like people look at it and be like you're, you're like committing to a terrible crime there or something like that. Yeah. All right. You don't fair. make memes? I I have screenshotted a lot. Like, is there like an app? 
Like I've always wondered, like what? Like I have this how does app this now work? called PixArt, and that to me is the best, <laughs> the best meme making app I've ever used. Is and it I'm, free though? Yeah. Of course. All right. What's your sign? Sagittarius. Oh, okay, cool. Is that all right, Sag Gang? You're a fire sign. Yes, I am. Wow, my girlfriend doesn't know anything about me. She wow. thought I was a Scorpio. Oh, shit. Ooh, I got to get a new one. All right. Oh, oh, and we're out of here. China, thank you so much for coming on here and breaking our like 50 dude interview streak. Uh, appreciate it. No, thanks for having me. And I hope I have that book. Really hope so. No, yeah, that's fine. I'll go look for it right now. I will. Thank you so much. Yes. Appreciate you. Oh, wait, I'm supposed to be like No Jumper, coolest podcast in the world. Check us out on YouTube, SoundCloud, and iTunes. Yeah, shout out to No Jumper. Bow, 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 bow. I knew there was something wrong with that. I always say bow, bow, bow at the end, too. Bow, 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 bow. I'm balling like an alpha.